give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth, and it shall not return to me void, that is, it won't be empty, and it shall accomplish what I please, or his desire, and it shall prosper in the things for which I sent it. And you know, we read the Bible a lot of times, we read the word of God uh, as a message to us, because if you want to know about life, this is where it is. But there is a lot of times that we have to take the word of God for ourselves and put our name there. So when it says this, it says here in, number, in verse 11, so shall my word, the word of God be in my mouth, and it shall not return void. And it shall accomplish what God pleases through me, and it shall prosper in the thing for which he sent it to prosper. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, that is a declaration. And each of us, we sang a song here, a couple of songs, about, you know, seeing through the eyes of God. Now, there's darkness all around us. You know, we, we hear all, you know, the newspaper, the news. I mean, it's so wonderful to sit there and, and hear the news today. I got a phone call the other day and saying, from Brazil, and said to us, oh, we hear all the problems in the America. And I said, well, yeah, we hear about the problems in Brazil. <laughs> okay, what would you like to do, talk about? So in other words, what I'm saying to you, there's a lot of words out there of darkness, but you happen to be the light. The word of God in your mouth brings life and not death. Amen. The word of God says, be anxious for nothing, but in all things, okay? Give him the praise. And so I'm encouraging you this morning, don't allow what you hear or what you see or what you're going through to, to decide your destiny. So when I look around, I don't see things how we see them in the natural. I see things as you see them in the spiritual. Amen. I decide to get God's eyes for me to look through. When I look at my sister, all right, I look through the eyes of Jesus to her that I might find life in her and touch that life even with my word of encouragement or giving her the word or ha having hands laid on her. It doesn't make any difference because we choose as Christians. We only live in this world when we're not of this world. Amen. And so you need to make choices every day when you get up. What are you going to do? Listen to the bad report of the spies and the giants? Or are you going to listen to the good reports? Because, you know, even though the world we see as it is, you are in another kingdom. You belong to another attitude. You belong to another atmosphere. And where you put your foot is the atmosphere you bring into it. And where you open your mouth is the attitude that you will give. You know, there's, you know, like we're talking about, we see Jesus high on his throne, all right? Well, you know, sometimes people need to see Jesus in us. We're the only vessels right now because when he went up to heaven and said it was finished, he meant it was finished, and then he gave the Holy Spirit to us for what? That we may go out and preach the word to the people and to the nations. So where you're sitting, what world you belong to is where you preach. Is where you minister. Now, you don't take the Bible and go up to somebody on the street and say, let me tell you what this word says. No, you talk to them natural. That's right. That's right. You say, is, brother, can, is there a need today? Sister, is there a need? I mean, we go to the uh, restaurants, and he knows he's been with us. And every place we go, airports, wonderful place to minister. Because we just talk natural. Amen. And then we get to hear what people have in their lives. And then we say, well, let me tell you something. And then we actually tell them scripture without them knowing it's scripture. Do you understand what I'm saying? And then they'll say to you, now where did you find that out? Where did, where did you get that? Where did you learn that? And then you can say, well, the word of God says, listen to me. You have the living power of God inside of you and the word of God inside of you, only you have to put it in there. Okay? You just can't come on Sunday morning, hallelujah, hallelujah. And then go home and say, well, guess what? You can't go home, argue with your parents. You can't go home, argue with your mates. you got to go home and look at what does God's word say about you. Now, he's going to go more into this. But we're encouraging you this morning that you are not your own. You were paid for with a price. Okay? And that price was Jesus Christ on the cross. And he gave you a promise, and it's called eternal life. 
But you can't live in the eternity of God's promises on the earth if you don't believe him or you don't have his word. So let me tell you something. You're in a downtown area. Guess what? It is the best area to be in. Wherever God has sent you is the best place for you to be in. You have opportunity next door with the art school. You have opportunity with all the projects in the area. And we, you know, we're, we're not young. We're going to be 70 and 71. And we still are hot for the word. Amen. We're hot to preach it. We still travel. And when, when the kids ask us, when are you going to retire? I'm like, what do you mean retire? There's no such thing as retiring from being kin kingdom people. We're just occupying until he comes. We preach the word day in and day out to ourselves. Is it always successful? No. There are days we get up and we say, yuck. But you know something? God is quick to remind us who we are and who he is. So never look at yourself in the place where saying, you know, 50 years ago of 49 and a half, when we were here taking our pictures, do you think we'd be here? Never. Never. We never had it in our mind. Do we think that this would turn into the body of Christ? No. Preaching the word. You know, my friend John next door, preach loud. He needs it. Great man. Great man. All right? But he needs it. The, the people next door, they need it. The art students, they need it. They need to hear things. They hear, they, if the walls vibrate, she you bad. Come on in. Join us. Vibrate with us. This is what you've got as a mandate. And the thing of it is, and I'm going to see it this way. God is looking at America and sending people like your pastor from a nation that we fed with the word and the missionaries for years. And we've become the missionary ground. Come on now. Now they're coming here. Now they're coming here. There's many, many people. I just met a brother from, two brothers from Nigeria. All right? And so I just want to encourage you. You be the ministers of the word to the people of darkness, people of the world. Now, you don't go around telling them they're in darkness. You don't do that. You know, that's not a good thing, you know. But you be the light. Amen? Well, good morning to you, and we're glad to be here. God has a plan and a destiny for you and I. You choose what destiny you want to go. That's right. You choose. You can be look defeated. You can be poor. Because this is just the way I came from. This was where my father and mother came from. Let me tell you something. We don't live in that kingdom. We live in the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The past said... Be connected to the transformer. If we are connected to the transformer, something supernatural happens in our lives. So you have no idea where I came from. No idea. I ain't going to tell you. I give my witness three times. But we have to realize that God the Father... Now I'm looking at some faces here. Some of you look like you don't even want to be here. And some of you are excited to be here. That's just part of what the body of Christ is. Okay? But when I speak, I don't look at that. I speak because the, what I speak, and if it is from the word of God, the word of God will transform you because the word of God is life and it's not death. We're gonna go. We're gonna proclaim Psalm 91 at the end here. Wow. 16 verses. It's all to proclaim, to proclaim, to proclaim what God is. So, my wife was gonna go to. We say, he, he, say, he used Jeremiah 29:11. For I know your thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace, not evil, <laughs> to give you your future, to give you your future. To give you and me a future and a hope to overcome whatever comes in our lives today. Wherever you are going through, he can overcome. Right. Because in Isaiah 43, he says that he goes 
through. When you go to the river, to the ocean, he goes through. When you go to the fire, he goes through with you. You never go alone. But you got to believe that. The biggest problem I see in the body of Christ today, wherever I go, is this. People are not reading the word enough. The only time you read the word is just Sunday morning. That's it. And if I usually ask people, what did the minister pe- uh, preach to you last Sunday? Oh, it was a good word. It was awesome. What is it? What was it? Oh, I, I can't remember. <laughs> <coughs> that word, whatever word you hear, you should mark some, the scriptures down. When you go back home, study that word. You want a Bible study? Study that word that was taught you every Sunday. I'm telling you, I'm going to challenge you. Number one, Father, Father God looks us in his mercy and grace. We have grace. We have grace. We have grace. We're not under the law. We're under the grace of the love of God. Number two, he is good God beyond our humanity and rebellion to save us and to cleanse us from all of our sins. That is what he is planning for you and I. The death of the resurrection of Christ has redeemed and restored God's people back to himself. Amen. You're not. You still have an old nature, but that old nature was nailed on the cross. Okay, and when Jesus rose from his death and resurrection power, you have that resurrection power inside of you. You got the Holy Spirit inside of you. And in Corinthians chapter 6, it says that you are the holy temple of the Holy Ghost. Right. You are holy. Say, I am holy. I am holy. I am a son and a daughter of the living God. I am a son and a daughter of the God. He has good things for me. He has good things for me. My life are in his hands. And he wants me to be blessed on this earth. Okay. <coughs> in Matthew chapter 6, not even my notes now. In Matthew chapter 6, it talks about the Our Father, right? Why don't you say uh, the Our Father? Go ahead. Say nice and loud. What in heaven? Name. Come. Be done. On earth as what? In heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. Who's on earth? Us. Who's us? The church. Who's the church? The body of Christ. Who has the authority to change this nation? Us. Our government are going to change. Matter of fact, they're so messed up, they don't even know what, what end is up no more. All you hear is I can say, we, we send them to represent us, and they not represent us, they represent what they think should be. That's right. Come on, church. That's right. That's right. He has a plan and a future to bless you. Now, look at this. A simple verse that we use, but we don't realize what the word abundantly means. John 10, verse 10 says this. We all know this. The thief does not come except what? To steal, to kill, and destroy. That's his job, and he's doing a good job. Why? Because we are allowing him to do it in our lives. We take each other down. We speak better about each other. Am I saying something that I'm touching somebody's toes? Well, I hope I am because I hope you change. Now look at this. Jesus goes, but I have come that you may have life and that you may have more abundantly. Abundantly means, can you put up there? Oh, he's good. He he even put Matthew chapter 6. Wasn't even my notes. He's good. (laughs) Okay, I I give this to him. This is what I want you to read. Mark this down, what the word abundantly means. Go ahead. Say it out loud. Say it again. Excessive, 
Overflowing. Is it overflowing your life? If it isn't, change it. What do you mean change it? What are you doing? What do you say? Give it. Check yourself. Check yourself. It might speak words of death. Proverbs 18, 20, 21 says, uh, uh, verse 20 says, a man's stomach shall be less satisfied. Then he goes, verse 21 he says, you can have life or death to the power of the tongue. You choose. You can choose whatever you want to live in. And yet still be uh, uh, saved and redeemed. I choose to speak good about my wife. I choose to speak good about my brothers and sisters. I always try to look the good of people. Listen, we can find faults with everybody. Yes. But my Jesus and your Jesus redeem you and I. Amen. Thank you. We were slaves. Then we became friends. Then we became what? After resurrection, we became what? Sons and daughters of the King of Kings. God's purpose to give you life and its fullness. Is your life full? Oh, uh, yeah, I want you to think. I want you to look at yourself. I want you to realize what? Do I have a bad attitude? Let me tell you something. I used to have a saint that used to come to church. She's in heaven now. And once in a while the Lord has me say this, I don't know why, but I'm going to. She started coming to our church. She goes, oh, Papa, they call me. I'm pretty good. If they call me, uh, uh, Pastor Rich Andes, I'm, in, I'm in pretty good shape. If they call me Tony, I'm in bad shape. But when they call me Papa Tony, man, I'm there. <laughs> yeah. So she was there for about two, three years, growing, growing. And she goes, all of a sudden, she says, she says, I need a meeting with you and Mama. I says, why? Well, there's things I want to share with you. Okay. I had an idea what it was about. This is the way she used to come to church. Can I have a chair, please? You got to see this. <laughs> now, she used to come 10 minutes, 15 minutes late every Sunday. I want you to get that every Sunday, 10 to 15 minutes. Okay? Then she used to leave the church 10, 15 minutes before it was over. You get the picture? Uh -huh. And she used to come, and she, this is what she used to, the way she used to sit. This is the truth. I, I did this in front of her. She lost it. She l lost it. Goes, Mama, do I really look like that? Yep. She lost. I mean, she laughed and laughed because she said, I can't believe it. I know that I do this. Comes in like this. In the wintertime, she had that coat of hers, and she'd be like this. <laughs> I dare you make my day. <laughs> That's the attitude. Never smiled. Praise and worship was awesome. Never stood up. Never lifted her hands. She was a miserable Christian. No life. No hope. Nothing. And she stood like this. So when she came to, uh, to have a meet with us, I said, okay. I did this to her. For her to see. She couldn't believe. She goes, oh my God. I says, you come. Ten minutes before the church starts, every Sunday, and you don't leave until it's over. Mm, all right. What you're doing, you're putting a wall that people could not go towards you. I says, I didn't even want to go towards you. I didn't even want to hug you. Why? Because you put that wall. Don't touch me. Don't you see I'm in pain? You're in pain because you want to be in pain. Because I know her life. There's an attitude that we carry. And the Lord says, the joy of the Lord is what? Our strength. Well, some people, some Christians don't look like they have nothing. <laughs> hey, I love the body of Christ. I stand with the body of Christ. And when I see people don't want to do what God is telling them to do, don't want to do what the pastors share with you on Sundays, and you still live and you go with an attitude, I'll do what I want to do. No man is going to tell me what to do. No, 
He's not a man. He's representing Christ. He's teaching the word. The word is the life given. So we have so many new things coming to the body of Christ. We have this now called, what is it? Inclusive. Inclusive. What is it? Inclusion. Oh, inclusion. You can't offend the people. Be nice to people. Just sing sweet words, sweet songs, and just give a nice message. Don't talk about sin. Don't talk about this. Don't talk. No, I'm not saying that we should talk about sin every Sunday. Come on. That's we live on New We don't live on the law. But when the law says there's sin in the camp, we've got to deal with it. Okay, and there's a ways according to scripture to do to deal with it. Then what happens? People get what? I'm offended. I am so sick and tired of hearing this from people that left the church. I get offended by the pastor. <laughs> I says, Well, I got offended by the saints too. What does that prove? Right. <laughs> saints offend me every Sunday probably. <laughs> You don't see me quit. That's right. <laughs> what is we get offended? You get offended because what was spoken was the truth and it hit that place that you want you didn't want to be touched. That's right, that's right. You still love me. <laughs> you have to. You know why? The Bible tells that you've got to love me. The, my Bible and your Bible says the truth will set us free. It's the truth. It's not, it's not false. It's not lying to you. It's the truth. The truth. The truth will set you free. I found one thing years ago. That people left churches. You know why? And they went to big church. You know why? I have nothing against big churches, please, don't get me. I love to have big churches. They used to say, well, nobody knows me there. I could go in, I could go out, nobody demands nothing of me. You know what that is? That's a rebellious spirit. I'm telling you, I've seen too much for 30 some years. I've seen a lot of stuff. That saints offended me? Yes. Did I offend people? Probably. But if I offend the people with a word, then I'm not offending you. The word is right. touching you in places that you don't want to be touched. Right. I'm telling you, this, I missed this three weeks ago in Indiana. It's totally different over here. It's amazing what the Holy Ghost does with the word. I said, well, last two weeks ago, I said, man, it was good. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I feel that people need to hear this. And all of a sudden, it changes. And use the same scriptures. Why do people look sad? Why do people look so, I'm going through, don't you know, if you only know the pain I'm going through. Listen, my son was rushed to the hospital yesterday. Yeah, yeah, kidney stones. He was in pain. He was in pain. I know I had kidney stones four times. I know what it's all about. Mm. And you know when I go through kidney stones, I'm in pain. Mm. Give me something. I don't want to go through this pain. It's the worst pain the body can go through. That's what the doctors say. But this man down to my knees. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Oh. You know when, I went, when her and I went to visit? We had a party. One of those comes in. We're having a party. We're having a party. I said, "Bless the name of the Lord." We're going to have a party. All of a sudden, it was four, four, five girls came in, and I ministered them. God gives opportunities to us to minister. You'd be surprised. You minister in the emergency room? Yep. I didn't act like a fool. 
I just ministered to them, loved them. I went to one, can I have a hug? Hey, my wife is with me, so, you know, I'm an old man, so, you know. <laughs> there were people around me, I didn't do that, I don't do that secret, you know what I'm saying? She goes, sure, she comes, gives me a nice hug, and I give her a nice hug, she says, you know something? She was a black young girl, she was gorgeous. She was from Jamaica. <laughs> she was from Jamaica, oh my God, I could take that one home. Mom oh. says, let's take her home. <laughs> she had a personality, oh my Lord Jesus, help me. <laughs> then she made a joke. Uh, we come in, right? I says, I come here to see Matthew Resendiz. Oh, Matthew Resendiz. Oh, you know what he told me? He told me that there's a man and woman claim to be his parents. Don't let him in. <laughs> and I really thought my son, because my son has a drive. He says, you know, I thought he, say, he would say that. I go up to him, he goes, I didn't say that to her. <laughs> she came in after, she's laughing. <laughs> but you see, there's opportunities for us. My son was hurting, and yet I, stopped, I still preach the word. Because I know my, the Lord's going to take care of her. Right. Amen. Amen. So you know what a bundle it means, right? Oh, I like the word overflowing. Over, over. It's full. It goes over everything. Your joy. You, 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 you sow joy, you get joy. That's right. That's right. You, you sow, you plant uh, love, you get love. Amen. You plant uh, anger, you're going to get anger back. That's right. That's true. This is the worst thing that we have. Oh, yeah. Amen. <laughs> God's purpose is to give you life and fullness. Thank you, Lord. A life of God is the original plan for mankind. To be enriched, to prosper. To break the devil's intent to hinder our receiving the goodness of God. He did that this morning. He broke the, the Prince of Pazavir. I love what he was doing. Romans 5, 8, 11. I love this. I love the book of Romans, man. I'm telling you, it's a powerful. God demonstrated his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You would you you know what that means? In uh, Psalm 139, it says this. I know you be before you were in your mother's womb. That's right, that's right. Amen. I put all parts of you, everything, you knew us. Yes. So when Jesus died two a little over 2,000 years ago, he had you and I in his heart already. To be the people of God, to be prospered, to be bold, to let the, the light shine through us. Go to Isaiah chapter 60. It's not part of the notes, but go ahead. I want you to read nice and loud. St uh, verse 1, 2. Amen. Oh, I'm making him work, but he's good. He's good. Isaiah chapter 60. Now, today I feel like I'm challenging you. God wants to bless you. God wants to bring you from where you are to where He wants you to be. Amen. Okay? Amen. That's what He wants. Yes. But you have a choice to walk according to the scriptures or to come against it. You come against it, you're going to walk the way you are all the time. Right. You're going to be poor all your life. And being poor is a curse. God brought him here. Why? To change this area. Thank you, Lord. To be the light in this area. What? To change. Right. That's right. You got it? Yes. Yes. All right. Who wants to read that? I want all of us to read that nice and loud. Go ahead. Right. And shine for thy light it come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Verse 2. Hold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall rise upon you and his glory shall be seen upon you. Is the glory of God shines when you walk out of here? Do people say something? What is with you? What is with you? Go to verse 3. My wife said go verse 3. And the Gentiles shall come to the light of the kings of the brightness of the Hallelujah. 
So that the attitude, the way we look about ourselves, the way we think of ourselves, don't let those thoughts control you. I am a son, a daughter of the living God. I am the I, my God loves me. He created me. He knew me before I was in my mother's womb. He has a plan and a purpose for me. Not to hurt me, but to bless me. The devil comes to steal. But my, Jesus came to give me abundantly. Abundantly. Overflow. Saints, get this overflow. You can be whatever you want to be. Yes. Amen. Amen. Don't get hooked with the government mentality. That program is good for time when people need fine, but don't stay there. Change it. I am going to be 71 years old in January. I came from Europe in 1954, wow. and it was a tough time for me. I was 12 years old. I went to school until 16. Those days, that's where it was. You work, you come out of school at 16, guess what? You work for the family. Hello. Hello. We came home every Friday, give the, the paycheck to who? The mama. I had food, I had clothes, I had a house, I had to pay no bills. They took care of it. All right. Until it came to time to get married, then things cha changed. But you see what I'm talking about? I went to work in the mill in the pocketbook factory. Mm -hmm. On the cove, that, oh, it was known Mickey Madame. I worked there for two years, but the first year I was there, I said, I don't like this life. I, can't, I cannot take care of my family. So I went to work and I learned how to cut meat. So I work six days a week from morning to night. So I'm on day off, just Sundays. I did that for five years. So when I went to work for the AMP, some of you remember AMP? I went to work at Long Way Hand. I was there for 12 years, the best company I ever worked for. Then the Lord called me out in the ministry. Now, there's something about this I want to share with you. Here I am doing very well. I make good money, good benefits, good retirement. My wife is working in the, in the bank. She makes good money, good retirement. We're doing very well. I have a, a beautiful home. I had a dog and a cat. I had two kids, two cars. Hey, I was... I was all right. After I gave my life to the Lord, a year and a half later, I lost my job, and she lost her job, and guess what? I thought I was going to lose my house. I went to the Lord, I said, Lord, how come this happen? I'm your son now. I did good when I was just a religious man. I found out years later. If I had stayed there, I would never leave to be in the ministry. No, I would not. God knew me. So that to happen. Yeah. And all of a sudden he called me to the ministry. I laughed when that happened. I did. Because my mentality was, I can't be a priest, I'm a married man. <laughs> I was a good Catholic boy. Now I could have missed God like this. I could have rejected, I don't want no part of this. I'm worse now than I was when I was uh, just a nice religious boy. You follow what I'm saying? But there's things that God's going to bring us into place to deal with our character. Yes, yes. But he never leaves you there. Right. The only way you and I can stay there is if we decide to stay there. That's right. That's right. It says, rise up. Shine like the glory. Yes, Lord. Isaiah 6 is what it says. Verse 9 in Romans 5 says, Much more than having now been justified by the Lord, by his blood we shall be saved from wrath through him. I'm telling you something. God has a plan. God wants for us to live. He tells us to. 
I'm going to, because I'm going to see if my wife has prophetic words, so I'm going to give her time to her here. Um, let me see, Lord, where do you want me to go? All right. Psalm 57, verse 2, I will cry to the Lord Most High, who perform on my behalf and rewards me, who brings me to pass his purpose for me and truly completes them. Completes them. Amen. I love this Psalm 138, verse 8. I love this Psalm. I go there all the time, memorize it. The law will perfect. And the word perfect there means complete. That which concerns me. What is that concerns you? What is that concerns you? He says, verse, uh, Psalm 38, 138, verse 8. The law will perfect or complete that which concerns me. Me. Yes. You. Amen. You will complete. Mm. Psalm 147 verse 13 through 15. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed the children within you. Yes. Your children should be blessed. Amen. Right. He sends out his command to the earth. His, his words run very swiftly. It's his word, not my word, not your word. His word. What is God saying about you? Where you are, your young people. Let me tell you something. I have a heart for the next generation. I, before God takes me home, I told him, I want to see the next generation be strong, bold yeah. in the Lord. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Prophesy the word. Cast out demons. Heal the people. Yeah. That's what I want to see the next generation. And God has touched the young people. Oh, yes, yes. And nobody will be able to stop them. That's right. That's right. Deuteronomy 7, 13. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 13. He will love you, bless you, and multiply you, as, and bless the fruit of your body. That means that young man, what, when I came here, when uh, the pastor was uh, encouraging you, charging you up, this little fellow, I was watching him, he's like this. He went from here to there, his eyes went from there to here. Then he went, then he went there, and his eyes went. He was falling his daddy. What? He knows, he knows the voice of his father. Yes. And he follows the father's voice. Do we know the voice of the Lord? This one is powerful. You can look at that in quite a few of the Paul's writing. Philippians 1 6. He who began good work in you will continue until the days of Jesus Christ. Right up to the time of his return, develop the good work, perfect it, and bring it to a full completion in you. That's his desire. He will complete yes. all he wants for you to give to him. Trust him. Now, you can say, Lord, I don't like where I am. Mm. Lord, I really don't like the place of my life right now. But Father, but I know you have a plan and a purpose for me. I know that whatever concerns me, you say you're going to take care of me. I know that the work that you started in me, you will complete. So Father, I surrender all to you right now today. Amen. I take this burden, this pain, this, this uh, attitude of mine, I bring it to the cross, Father. Amen. See, that's what you have to do. Until what? Until it happens. Until you stop believing it. Okay, I said this. Yeah, it goes to Psalm 91. 16 verses. Very powerful. I want all of us to read this. Because I see, by you hearing the minister all the time, some of you get tired of hearing the voice. But I want you to proclaim this. Psalm 91. I want you to pro uh, read it this nice and loud, everyone. And I mean everyone. Everyone. In the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of power and from the noise of the pestilence. That's a promise, isn't it? 
Go ahead. That's the way we live it today in the world. Go ahead. Shall not what? Shall not come to you. Go ahead. That's a promise. Amen. That's a promise of God to us. Yeah. Go ahead. For he shall give his name and to thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. To keep thee all thy his ways, right? They sick okay. He has no wit whose name? He knows exactly where you are, he knows exactly where you live. You cannot run from him. You think you can hide, but you can. That's right. Amen. Go ahead. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him. Leave that there, this one. Keep that one there. That's 16. No, it's 15. Go ahead. Go to 16. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Go back to 15. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. And I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. That should read every single morning. Each one of us should read that. You proclaim that and you, you realize you let the devil know who you are. And that this psalm will really transform you. And you can do Psalm 27. It's a powerful psalm too. I am telling you, God wants to transform you. You and I, all we have to do is surrender. That's it. That's it. You can't work. You cannot be good enough. I am saved, redeemed because of him, not because of me. Amen. I'm anointing to minister God because of him, not because of me. I didn't earn it. I didn't deserve it. He did it for me. Amen. He can do it for you. Amen. Amen.